Hey there, friends. I have the other affordable 100 watt kit. It is a 100 watt kit only. Um, and it's not a kit, actually, now that I think about it. It's a 100 watt setup from Harbor Freight. Something quick and easy. Um, I apologize. It is Saturday, and all the neighbors are getting their yard work done. So I will try to be loud enough for you guys to hear me. So this is another a secondary 100 watt setup. This is something if you are just looking to have the panel, a charge controller, obviously some extensions, battery, and uh, your inverter. So if you don't want some of the extras, which are really nice in the other 100 watt kit, such as the lights and whatnot, um, this is also a really good option, very affordable. Uh, I gotta say, it's actually one of the most affordable options. Uh, first off, you'll want the 100 watt panel right here. So this is the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt 100 watt panel, if I can pick it up. There we are. I do believe this is the, oh, you can't see it, I'm sorry guys. Here we go. That is a model cellular panels mono the, it's the the mono panel panel which is really nice um the difference between the mono, mono and the poly is that the mono does actually absorb some more of the light a little bit better so you do get a little bit more involved in that this is your charge controller i want to make sure i'm in view here this is your charge controller um, what's important about this is to understand that this is, they say 100 watt max. It is 100 watt max. Um, but that said, the reason it, it also says 7 amps. Why is that important? Because a lot of solar stuff and electric stuff, when you get further into it and out of the simplistic kind of plug and play systems, you're looking more at amperage and ampacity than you are strictly wattage and that was one of the first mistakes I had to learn when I started my uh, solar journey and so I'm trying to help those who are also starting out in their solar journey and they want to try new things when it comes to solar or just want to learn um, let me see if I can find it right here uh, 100 watt solar panel is it gonna have the amperage it doesn't have the amperage on the label, and I can't see. Here we are. Sorry, guys. I'm using a tripod, trying not to make it a motion sickness nightmare, and I think I'm failing terribly because we're outside and I can't really see all that well. So, you're going to want this. You're going to want... Can you see it? Yes. You're going to want this. You're going to want your panel. I recommend getting the solar power connection cable set. This is the accessory set. Really nice to have um, with whatever systems you want. And then obviously you want a battery. Now if you're just building power, which I don't see why you would want to do that without uh, utilizing it, an inverter. I will have links for all of this so you can either order or find it all on your own. Um, I'll set up different types of links. I do believe you can find this in the auto section at Walmart and obviously pick some of this stuff up at Harbor Freight. Though right now, I just checked the three Harbor Freights in my area um, and I can't find any of these panels. I can find all the kits, but not the panels. And it's driving me crazy because I actually have a different video. I need a secondary one of these. And I want to use it for my solar, sun, solar cool room, but I digress. That's not important right now. So. We'll start off here. Here's your solar charge regulator, otherwise known as a charge controller. When you're plugging this in, this is for your load. I think we've discussed load before in one of my other things. This helps you, you can connect this to something um, in order to keep your battery from overcharging on anything. It is kind of important. I do recommend keeping those separate if you're not gonna utilize them or trimming them and binding them off or wrapping them in electrical tape so they don't touch my kids. I was teaching them a solar class 
for homeschool so they can build their own solar systems, solar power systems, I should say. And they learned the hard way what happens when you touch these. It actually melted the back out and we could have had a fire. And of course we did it, you know, inside because at the time it was gloomy and I was doing it as an example. So uh, that got a really interesting very quickly. And then you have the solar SAE connector and then you have the battery SAE connector right here, okay? So those are kind of important. This is a extension. This is really nice to have. This is, should only go from the solar panel to the charge controller, okay? So I'm not gonna pull, I'm not gonna have that right yet. That just happened to be on top. This comes in your, <laughs> excuse me, sorry. This comes in this solar connection kit. This goes on your battery. And as I said in one of my other videos, you always want to connect the charge controller to the battery first because you don't want to overload the battery or the charge controller and then mess that up too. So go ahead and slide it in. It is going to be hard the first time around. This has been sitting in the sun for a hot minute because I've been running around gathering all the materials. And also I've plugged these in and out and in and out because I do have, uh, I do run classes and stuff like that here for simple systems. So we have the connectors to the battery. We'll bring the battery over. Maybe. It's a little heavy. Forgive me on my battery. I'm missing the nuts on that. Uh, I gotta go find them. It's kind of one of the hard things about setting up systems is things get on, taken on, put off, or put on, taken off a lot. So we go ahead and pop that right on there. And let's see if you can see the lights. There's not any lights on right now. I can't really see all that well or see if I can show you. So we have that. Now we can connect the extension cable right here on the SAE to the solar, right? And we go get the whole other end. And then, of course, I folded it underneath because that's just the story of my life. Um, go ahead and clip that right in here, just like that. Again, it slides in really nicely because it's kind of warm and been sitting in the sun for a minute, but also I use it a lot. So now we're connected. It's literally two plugins to connect this to a battery. Pull it up, set it up, just like that. Bada bing, bada boom. Very simple. Uh, I, I, I admire the simplicity, which is why I utilize this as my kids set up. Why should kids learn about solar? Why not? It's fun. They can learn how to, how you can generate power from the sun. So when, as you can see, hopefully the charging light is on. So we don't have that. We don't have the low voltage. We don't have the high voltage. So the battery's not fully charged yet. So, cause the high voltage is not on. So we are charging right now. Last but not least, the inverter. So if you're looking to Oh, sorry guys. Sheesh. Okay. Now you can connect your inverter. Let's see if I can connect it on there. This is a lot easier when you use the ones with the loops, but sometimes I need a more portable system. I actually wonder if I can just do that. No. Nope. Oh, here we go. Actually, let me try to add again. So I like that better. So, because I lost the bolts, but these clamp down nicely on the pegs, even though I don't have the nuts. And you can't see. Here we go. This might bounce again. I don't want to do that to you guys. So then we go ahead, connect this one here. And then this one here. It's going to give a little pop or a snap. Sometimes it's a bigger pop and a snap. It depends 
there's a little, couple of factors. It's not a bad thing. It, it'll startle you, but it shouldn't be bad. And here we are. We just turned the inverter on. And i move you down just a hair so you can see it. It pro The lights themselves on the camera probably undulate a lot. Um, it doesn't do that when you're not on camera. So, and it's showing me that it is a full battery. So it's just not too full where it's going to need, it, it's going to need me to put a pole on it just, just yet. But what's nice is, is you have 750 watts to kind of, to kind of play with. So you'll be looking at appliances and seeing how many watts you can use. Obviously you don't want to use more then you have the watted watt hours of your battery. And say, for example, you wanna keep your battery charged while still running stuff. You need to make sure that you're matching the watt hours with your solar panel so that it's con continuously charging as you're decharging and utilizing such said power. Anyway, this is a really short video. Um, I just wanted to come out here and show you guys how how to set this up because I do have friends who are looking for really simple options. This one's a lot more simple. It's a lot more portable. Um, in the long run, do I recommend posting this on a board or like a milk crate so you can put it on top of your... Uh, you can set it up in a milk crate on top of your battery so that way it's all together and it's not... Um, problematic and getting the cords twisted and bent a lot you can um, if you utilize it a lot so it's just it, it comes down to you guys and how what you want to do with it anyway uh, that's all I have for this video thank you for watching I hope you guys are healthy I hope you're happy I hope you're safe and you have a great day see you next time